This week, I'm gonna show you what zebras are and how you can use them to help your photography. The zebra function is a highlight warning indicator and it's come across from videography. But now we have hybrid cameras that can shoot both video and stills. You can also use it in your photography. It doesn't control exposure, but it warns you of a certain exposure level on parts of the image. It may make the image on the monitor look very strange, but this isn't recorded in the final photograph or video. So basically it's a function that helps you with your exposure. To turn it on in your Sony a7 III, go into the menus and select tab two, page six out of nine and click on zebra setting. Turn them on and then select zebra level. In this, you'll have settings from 70 to 100 plus, and then two custom settings. The numbers can be equated to IRE levels. This is a very geeky term, and basically it refers to your brightness or luminosity. An IRE is a unit used in the measurement of composite video signals. Its name is derived from the initials of the Institute of Radio Engineers. A value of 100 IRE was originally defined to be the range from blanking level to peak white in a video signal. 100 could be equated to 100% brightness. Zero could be equated to zero brightness. So pure black and pure white. Well, if we look at the back of the camera, I've purposely overexposed this image. I've set my zebras to 100 plus, and you can see the zebra pattern on this screen. When I look at the preview image, you can see that the blinkies show that this area should be overexposed. However, when I bring the image into Lightroom, I can still recover the highlights. This is quite misleading and quite frustrating as well because the whole idea of zebras is that you bring them up so you see them on the screen and then you pull your exposure back a little bit so the zebras disappear and you know you're at the point just before overexposure. It's always a good idea to go and test it for yourself. So I suggest even if you go out into the garden or outside your house or apartment, take a few photos and then go back in and have a look to see what happens on your computer. Then by doing this test, you'll start to learn loads about your camera and how it works and how you can get the best out of it. As the zebras are basically a videography tool, they'll show you a certain exposure or IRE level on the back of the camera, on the monitor or in the EVF. Now this is basically a JPEG readout. The format that these cameras film in is the H.264 format. H.264 is basically the video version of a JPEG. It bakes in lots of different settings and you don't have the flexibility like you would in RAW. So then I had a little play around with the custom function in the Zebra settings. Even though the manual didn't have much on these, this is what I've found. There are two settings. The first one is lower limit and the second one is standard plus range. Lower limit seems to be like the preset figures. However, to get the same as 100 plus, I have to set it to 99 plus. Standard range gives you a level and a range of IRE numbers you can set the zebras to. As I predominantly shoot stills at the moment, I want to get as much out of the camera as possible and fully utilize the whole dynamic range that the camera offers. Therefore, if I can get the zebras to show the actual overexposed parts on a raw file, I'll know that I'll be at the limit, my highlights won't be blown out, but I'm squeezing as much information out of the camera as possible. So I did a test with each of these custom settings seeing how far I could push the image before the raw file became overexposed in the highlights. First of all, I set it to lower limit and 100 plus. I took a photo with no zebras on the screen and then another photo with zebras on the screen. Both of these still had details in the highlights. Next, I set the lower limit to 105 plus and took another two photos, one without zebras and one with zebras. Again, both of these shots had details in the highlights. The third test I did was with lower limit and I set it to 109 plus. Again, I took two photos, one with zebras and one without. Now this is where it gets interesting. The first shot I can still bring back in Lightroom by pulling down the highlights and the exposure. There is still detail and good color in the highlights. With zebras showing at this level, now when I try and pull the highlights back, 
I start seeing some funky colors in the sky. This shows that it's lost certain colors and basically these have blown out and the camera hasn't recorded any details in all of the color channels. So therefore, when I set it to this limit and there are no zebras, I know that I'm at the limits of my highlights I'm not overexposing them and I'm not underexposing them. Now, as I'm pushing this camera as far as it can go and really squeezing as much detail out of the highlights, I'm gonna test this over the next month or so just to see what results I get. I'll be keeping the zebras set to lower limit, 109 plus, just to see what results I get. I'll make sure when I'm exposing the shot, I'll get the highlights on the screen and then I'll bring the exposure down a little bit to get rid of those zebras. It'll be interesting to see how the camera copes, whether or not I start losing details in the highlights, and also to squeeze as much of the dynamic range out of the camera as possible. If you want to see how I get on over the next month with these settings, head over to my website, scroll down to the bottom of my homepage and sign up for my weekly newsletter. In this, I'll send you links to downloadable files so you can take a look at the images yourself. My weekly newsletter will include tests like this with downloadable examples, any interesting photography news, and of course, links to my latest videos. It's one per week, no more than that, and of course, no spam. We all hate spam. Next, I tested standard plus range. In this setting, when you set the range to a really low amount like one, you only get a thin strip of zebras. So part of the image could be overexposed without zebras on it. If you set it to 100 plus or minus one, you know that the zebras are only gonna show on 99 to 101. When I set the range to five, I got very similar results to the test that I've just done. This is why I recommend using lower limit. With standard plus range, you could have areas that are overexposed without any zebras on. The best thing to do is to go out and test it for yourself. I keep saying this, but the more of these little tests that you do, even if you just go out into your garden and take some images and bring them back into your computer, you'll get a better understanding of this setting and you'll be able to work out what works for you. The DRO setting basically lets the camera adjust the exposure to have more dynamic range available for the mapping of the image. This often reduces exposure to get more details in the highlights. Therefore, this will affect the zebras, but not in how they operate, just in how the shot is exposed. So you might see the zebras moving subtly if you turn DRO off or on, but the zebras will still cover the levels that you set them to. With DRO, I'd recommend turning this off. Picture profiles do not affect your RAW files, so as long as you're shooting in RAW, there is no reason to have picture profiles switched on. These are mainly a function for videographers to get as much dynamic range out of the shot as possible. They are profiles that are baked into a video file or a JPEG. So as long as you're shooting in RAW, which you should be doing, you should keep this function off when shooting photographs. Another use for zebras is where you can get a good exposure on a person's face. If you take an average Caucasian person, you set your zebras to 70. When you then get them on the screen, you'll set the exposure so you can see the zebras on their face. So for an example, I've set this camera up to level 70 and you can see I've set the exposure so these zebras do appear on the brighter parts of my face. When I switch to the normal view, you can see I've got good exposure. In theory, this works really well, but say if you have someone with very pale skin or slightly tanned skin, then this may mess up the system. So I stay away from this one. Now, even though I don't use this technique, I'm just making you aware of it, so then you have the option of using zebras in this way. And that's about it. Zebras are a really good tool to use to help you set your exposure correctly. If you don't mind the zebra pattern being on the image of the back of the screen, knowing that it's not gonna be there on the final image, you can use this and very quickly dial in your exposure. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you next time.